Well, hello. Thanks for joining me. This will be a VR to the Swing Kid 100, James. And James has posed a VR giveaway on the Piper's hat. James has asked us to show him our favorite hat and perhaps also tell a little story about the hat, if there is a story that goes along with the hat. So, James, that got me to thinking. I knew I was going to do a reply because I do like hats. Um, and normally I would be wearing a hat, but since I'm inside the house, I will not be wearing a hat. Or a cap, or anything else. So, my favorite hat. That's a tough one, because I have a lot of hats. Well, not really a lot of hats. I have a lot of caps. I have a lot of headwear. So, let's start this. I think we're going to start ruling out the headwear that doesn't work. And one of the interesting things along the line here as I was gathering my hats for this video is, James, you forced me to realize that not only do I have tobacco acquisition disorder and pipe acquisition disorder and perhaps pipe accoutrement acquisition disorder, I also have headwear acquisition disorder. So let's begin. First of all, we're going to rule out um, balaclavas, neck gaiters, hoods, anything like that, because they don't really qualify as hats, in my opinion. Next we can rule out the caps, and I think we'll start with the hunting caps, or the uh, caps I use for working in the woods to be visible and seen. So the knit cap, those are out. They are in no way a favorite. Um, and along that same line, caps with visors. Um, I think we can start ruling these out as well, even the nicer wool ones. Um, they really don't qualify as favorites. We can rule those out. Another wool cap. Okay, I think the well, no, no, still have some caps left here. I guess I have the uh, running caps, also helmet lining caps, caps I use for underneath helmets. Those are out. Uh, more brimmed caps, these are again running caps, very lightweight wicking caps. Those are out. Uh, ski caps, knit ski caps, while they have some fashion statement to make. They are out. They are not a favorite. The more traditional knit caps, those two can be ruled out. Oop, another helmet liner. That can be ruled out. Specialty caps, like a river cap that has the neck protector. Keep, keep the sun off the neck. Those can be ruled out. Um, knit caps like the Bolivian style with the tassels and the ties, those can be ruled out. Hmm. More caps. Again, your basic baseball style cap, visored cap, they can be ruled out. Uh, a little warmer knit caps with visors. Knit caps with visors, they can be ruled out as a favorite. Um, railroad type caps, those can be ruled out, although they're kind of cool. If you like the Stormy Cromer look, the railroad look. Um, military caps, my old military caps, oh yes, and that was that was the color of the military uniform at one time. Um, those can be ruled out. Boonie cap, that can be ruled out as well. 
although this is probably the first real hat I've shown, but we can rule that out. Uh, the Elmer Fudd style hats with the fur earmuffs, those can be ruled out. Uh, the fur trooper style hats, um, this one's sheepskin, the other one is kind of a faux fur, I think it's downlined. Those can be ruled out, they're kind of casual. So, I believe that's all of the caps that I have. Those are out. So that brings me to the hats. And we can start narrowing these down. Uh, we'll start with the cloth hats. The oil cloth hat. These are both Filsons, one with a chin strap, one without a chin strap. Great hat for fishing, great hat for popping around, water resistant. For winter, that style, but in a wool cloth version. You can kind of rule that out. For summer, the straw hat. You can rule that out. Now we get into felt hats. And the first style are the kind of the floppy brim. Um, and then basically the same, a little bit wider brim with a chin strap. I like these. This one I picked up in on a trip to Yellowstone, and this one from a trip to Theodore Roosevelt National Park. So yeah, those those have a, have some meaning to me. Um, a few more here. I guess we're down to the last four. This one, this one is more for fun. This is just festivals, summer festivals. Um, the Elpen hat, the Tyrolean hat. But not really a favorite. This time of year, well, not quite this time of year, but in another month and a half or so, the Fur Trooper will be an everyday hat. I like this hat for this time of year, for winter. This one I picked up in, in Gdansk, Poland. Quite a bit of meaning to me there. Alright, we're down to two hats. And these are now the... At one time I had... I think I had four fur felt hats. Um, one of them the kids took about 15 years ago and used it for a snowman. While I was away on a trip, I came back and it was frozen to the top of the snowman. That now sits in the garage in a box with all the other snowman making adornments. There's a corn cob pipe and some buttons and various other stuff. Charcoal, I think. Anyway, fur felt hats. This particular one, I don't know if you'll be able to read that label, but it is a beaver hat company fur felt. And back when I had to wear suits on a regular daily basis, I had hats. Um, this is a kind of a lightweight fur felt. There's little ventilation holes in the side. I wore that one primarily in the summer. Nice hat. However, my favorite hat is still a Stetson Forenza. And this Stetson, I don't know if you can see it there, probably not, but it came from a haberdashery, a, a men's shop in Milwaukee. It was Lee Lewis. And Lee Lewis was an old-time downtown Milwaukee haberdashery men's shop. He had hat supplies, notions of various sorts, and soft goods such as hats and suits and whatnot. This was the, probably the last hat. This was the last hat I bought from Lee Lewis before he went out. Before the two old gentlemen went out of business. It was a neat shop. 
This hat also has sentimental value from the standpoint of a dear friend of mine who is now deceased. Also used to shop at Lee Lewis and bought his hats at Lee Lewis. So at 58 years old, he passed away. But every time I read the label of Lee Lewis, it, it brings back memories of him. So my favorite hat, without a doubt, is this Stetson Forenza probably from the 1990s, if not earlier. There it is. Hope that satisfies your video request, James. It was kind of fun pulling all these hats together. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with some of them. It's time to get rid of most of them, I think. And just to finalize the housekeeping here, I am smoking a Nording. This is the hunting edition, the Red Fox. I've smoked this in other videos. And in it, I am smoking um, some Silum's Linea Epoch Antique, which is a, a burly blend. It's got some other stuff in it, Cavendish and Virginia as well. So there you go, hats and caps and balaclavas, ski caps, neck gaiters. There's a lot of them here. Anyway, um, hope you're doing well. Take care, and perhaps I shall see you again.